Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the last video we took a look at a system that hadn't been turned on in nearly a decade. It was absolutely clogged with dust but fortunately we cleaned it up and got it working again. However my particular employment of the Diawa technique in that last video regarding the CPU fan attracted a few negative comments and I was inclined to agree with what I was reading. I unnecessarily chucked away a perfectly good stock Intel heatsink and it was only when when I revisited the system yesterday afternoon that I realised my CPU temperatures were really quite high with a later released modern day stock Intel heatsink which really isn't the same in terms of quality as its predecessor. Luckily the bins around here don't get collected until tomorrow morning so I thought why not fish it out, give it the cleanup that it deserves and see if it can reduce some of those high temperatures that I've been experiencing. You see I used the wrong technique. Instead of Diawa, I should have employed the Sidkey technique. Store it, don't chuck it. Because you never know when you're going to need something that you've thrown away. It's happened all too often to me. I throw something away and a couple of days later, I massively regret it. So it's time to give the old copper core heatsink fan combo the cleanup it deserves and see if it can reduce some of the high temperatures that I've been experiencing with this system. So I originally threw the stock cooler away because it was jammed up with dust. And when a bit blew off of it and landed in my mouth, I wanted it to be as far away from me as possible. Since replacing it with a more modern heatsink though, I noticed how hot the processor was getting in games. Let's take a look at a few titles with the temperature recordings on screen. Don't pay much attention to the frame rate as I recorded with MSI Afterburner today, which took a huge chunk out of performance. The important thing here is just the temperature. As you can see during my testing of three random titles, the processor often exceeded and peaked above 70 degrees Celsius with the newer replacement stock heatsink. This isn't as hot as some CPUs out there, but for the E6600 it is a bit high. Extra heat can significantly reduce the lifespan of any processor, and it's a good job I didn't try overclocking using this fan. The CPU also idled at 50 degrees. So what makes this older one so special? Well, unlike newer examples, the D6188001 was intended for high performance of the time Core 2 duos, and as such featured a copper core that was far better at heat dissipation. Intel were also on the receiving end of some criticism at the time because of loud stock coolers, or so I've read. So by doubling the mass and using a less powerful fan on top, this made sure to not only keep CPUs cool, but your system quiet. In its current state, it meant my PC didn't even boot, as you saw in the last video. So it's time to clean this thing up. To do that, I'll be using a can of compressed air and an old paintbrush. Let's deal with the heatsink before the fan. The mass of what looked like solid grime actually shifted quite well even after just one blast. Dave didn't like the sound of the canned air much, so I gave him some ham to distract him. With a few more blasts I managed to get rid of most of the loose dust, and switched to the paintbrush to get at some of the more ground in stuff. The thermal paste on the copper base crumbled away with a light wipe of a tissue, so I can't imagine it had ever been replaced. It's not perfect, but it's much better than what it was, and with that, it was the fan's turn. Again I blasted most of the loose stuff out with the air can, but this required a little more brush cleaning than the heatsink, though it didn't take much longer than 15 minutes to disassemble, clean and then reassemble it. The fan just clips onto the top. With that done it was time to reapply it to the motherboard with the help of some Cooler Master thermal paste. When you compare both the older fan and new version, it's clear that they really aren't made like they used to be, and I was pretty stupid to throw the old beast in the bin. 
With everything back together, I fired up the same set of games to see how much difference there actually was. Even before doing so, I noticed a drop in idle temps from 50 to 37, so things were looking promising. In Half-Life 2, I played through the same opening level and the temperature peaked at almost 15 degrees lower than before, not to mention the noise was slightly reduced too. The system is generally quite loud anyway, and I haven't yet pinpointed exactly why, but as you may have seen, I've already replaced the PSU to try and reduce the noise levels. In Call of Duty World at War Zombies, the CPU also stayed at a more sensible, cooler temperature. Just like before, I'll have to say don't focus on the frame rate, as the recording really slowed things down. Finally, in the Far Cry 2 benchmark run, the temperatures also stayed below 60 degrees, as opposed to hovering slightly above 70. With a good 10 to 15 Celsius slashed off the heat figures, I have to say I'm glad I retrieved this thing from the bin. The cooler idle and low temperatures also meant we could mess around with overclocking, something that the E6600 and ASUS Bald should be more than capable of. I jumped into the BIOS and played around with different settings, before settling for a speed just over 3 GHz. A pretty tame overclock considering these are capable of more, but one that meant we could see a slight increase in the performance of CPU intensive tasks. Of course your best bet for overclocking is to always opt for an aftermarket cooler instead, and with just 2 gigs of RAM and a 7900 GS GPU in our system, there wasn't much difference to be seen in games. That being said, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It was a silly mistake of mine to throw out that old Intel heatsink. What a beast it really is. And it really does help in keeping the system cooler, especially under load. So I know today's video has been something a little bit different, but nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. And this subject was playing on my mind over the weekend, especially reading your comments regarding my initial disposal of the heatsink fan. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.